Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Chu. I'm a product manager working on bringing ML Ops to GitLab. In this video, I'll walk you through our model ops concept map. This map breaks down the data science process into key activities, mapping them to user roles and GitLab products for features that support each step. First, a quick note about the data science process. While it may seem similar to software development, it's largely an exploratory exercise, closer to research than engineering. It's an iterative process focused on approaches and strategies instead of software design. Outcomes are less certain, and results from each step can change the fundamental understanding of the problem. So we'll treat ML ops as related, but distinct from DevOps. Now let's dive into the ML ops activities. It starts with business understanding and planning. Next, data scientists prepare the data for experimentation, understand what they're working with, and design features. Model training is typically a series of experiments using training data to arrive at the best fit model while avoiding overfitting. Data scientists continue, continuously verify the experiment results. Once they're satisfied, they validate that model matches stakeholder expectations. A candidate model is versioned and deployed to production. From there, mature teams continuously monitor the model's relevance. Continuous training is set up by bringing actual production data back and automating the training, versioning, and deployment cycles. You'll notice that I separated out the planning activities from the rest of the ML ops activities. It is not a separate process, but it is the stage where the software engineering and data science teams may come together. When software teams are building products that consume the model produced by the data scientists, it's important that all roles involved can be, in, can, can be involved right from the get-go and iterate over the plan. The roles involved each activity are listed above. Below, you'll see uh, the, the GitLab tools or product that are used. Green lines signify areas that we'll work on this year. Blue lines are existing capabilities. Red dotted lines are new capabilities that are not yet planned. And yellow dotted lines are planned integration. This year, we'll be bringing the core capabilities for running experiments at scale, collaborating on model fleets, and deploying models to production. Looking ahead, I'm particularly interested in the model bill of materials concept, or MBOM for short. Just like software bill of materials is important, MBOM comprising of data, architecture, software, and libraries that are used. It's an important way for governance officers and auditors to track how a model is created. Being able to stitch together this lineage is something I believe GitLab is well positioned to deliver. And there likely will be a large market for this capability. Another reason that we're excited to bring ML Ops to GitLab is the potential to leverage existing capabilities across the data science process. For example, data scientists today mainly work in Jupyter Notebooks. They're creating code for experiments and training. This code could be checked into Git and treated like any other code in GitLab. However, a startup founder told me only around 30% of data scientists currently do this. We need to improve the interface so that they can benefit from GitLab's automation, collaboration, and review capabilities. I've outlined more examples of other capabilities we might take advantage of in the ML ops um, process. Please take a look. Now let's, now let's touch on data ops. Data ops is a sister concept to ML ops. Together, they make up what we refer to as the model ops uh, stage in GitLab. Data ops is about bringing data to facilitate business processes and enable ML ops. One example of such a platform that does this is Meltano, which spun out from GitLab a few years back. We'll keep tabs on this space, but won't actively be working in data ops since it's further removed from GitLab's core mission. Lastly, let's talk about Gen AI. Specifically, how will we help customers incorporate language models into their software? The good news is the process to create language models is fundamentally not different than traditional ML ops. 
though possibly with larger data volumes and higher hardware requirements. However, we also see customers looking to customers, customize language models for their software. For this, we believe it's important to help make building on top of fundamental foundational models easy and with the same line of sight as the rest of software development. We plan to look into integration with vendor or open source model gardens. In the future, we may bring additional native capabilities, such as the general prompt registry, to facilitate a smoother experience for teams building apps powered by language models. This gives you an overview of the model ops concept map. Please feel free to dive in and take a look if you have access to the Figma file. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or leave a comment. Thanks for watching.